we have a one-year-old Maine Coon kitty who presented for some chronic ear infections that the owners were unable to get under control. And we've had them start some medication this week, but if you can see in here, we've got a lot of crusting. If you just peek in there, there's a little bit of a pink um, lesion kind of sticking out there. So this kitty actually has polyps in both ears and polyps are a response to chronic inflammation and ear infections and kitties are, you know, our guilty party generally for forming these. So you can see we've got a lot of schmoo in there, even though this cat, we've went ahead and started it on medications. So we're going to remove these polyps today and we have a nice camera system here. Generally what you do is we reach down in there, we have a couple different tools. We're going to grab the polyp and it's on a stalk. There's one this big that you can see. Honestly, I'll probably start with the hemostat and if I don't get it all with that point, then we'll use the um, uh, smaller items. But I'm going to reach them in here. And thankfully, again, I can see this kitty's under anesthesia. Go from this way. This kitty's under anesthesia and we have a tube protecting its airway. Sometimes these polyps, I'm gonna put some pressure and there we go. Um, these tubes can, or these uh, polyps can extend down what we call the eustachian tube, which is the small little tube that connects our ear to the roof of our mouth. So if we fly on a plane and your ears start to pop, you start to swallow, that helps to open and release that pressure. So we'll need to check the oral cavity as well but you always want to make sure when you do this that you have the airway um, protected so now we can see what we got in there we're going to clean this out as you can imagine now we've got quite a bit of blood because we just pulled that out so we're gonna put some gauze in there q-tip and just kind of give it a minute to pressure and then we've got a nice camera system here that will stick down there and make sure we got it all this eardrum is is not likely to be intact and we warned the owners of that ahead of time this kitty unfortunately has these in both sides so we'll infuse these ears we recommended sending this this polyp or this mass out for biopsy just to be sure that it is indeed benign and young kitties they most always are but i have had some older kitties that have had some cancer solutions that have looked like polyps so the biopsy is always recommended unfortunately it's not in this client's budget today so we're going to just um, treat supportively julie can i have that camera please here and see what we got so it's still a little bit of blood but we can see all the way down in there so we'll flush this out here a little bit and clean this up but now we've got a nice open canal so we'll go to the other side so we got the blood mostly dried up so you can see we can see all the way down in there now we're going to flush with just a little bit of saline so we've got an open canal we're going to medicate this kitty and then we should be hopefully done so we have a Nice little port on here. Stick our syringe down. Just gently flush some sterile saline. Obviously, you can't see much when we do this initially. But there we go. Now we can see a little bit better. Just a little tiny blood clot there that will leave. Go to the other side. So I pretty much have the same thing on this side. Again, if you can look through, this one is a little bit even more visual. Here you can see down in there. A lot of times you do need a specialized camera to see these polyps, but not in this case. So we're gonna, same thing, grab a hold of this at the base. And usually I like to do a little bit of gentle, oh, now this one broke apart a little bit. So I'll try to get a hold of it a little farther down. I like to just do a little bit of gentle, firm pressure. Yeah, this one's going to be a turd. Come apart in pieces. Yeah, usually they come off in one big stock, but sometimes they don't. So we're going to have to... And this one we might have to use the camera for farther down. I can still see it from this angle, so I'm going to try one more time here before I get up the... gun. 
Jones. This one's being a pain. So we'll use our camera, see if we can get a better look at it. Grab a hold of it a little farther down. Sometimes I'll use the camera and still use the hemostats, or sometimes you have to use this instrument to see if we can get enough grasp of this thing. too much of a foothold. So I needed some help to hold the ear canal open a little bit and we actually used, I used two hemostats so I grabbed a hold of it enough to elevate a little bit since this one was breaking apart into a couple pieces and unfortunately I didn't have enough hands to do the video. <laughs> but um, same thing, so this was way down in there so we got the, should get the whole thing just like before we're gonna check and make sure. So here's the, the left ear, here's the right ear check and make sure with our camera and um, using some q-tips to make sure we've cleaned all of this thing out of there again we're going to infuse the ear with some antibiotics flush it we gave this kitty an injectable antibiotic as well um, because again the eardrum is ruptured we did warn the owners ahead of time that this cat could experience neurologic symptoms because we're in the middle ear um, they can experience neurological symptoms anyway because the polyp can cause them so uh, let's see what we got here So we have um, our polyp kitty back, Miss Dora. She's uh, two weeks after her um, polyps were removed from both ears. So we're gonna stick the scope down in there and see what's going on. Her owner noted that she's doing much, much better. Oh, perfect. So we can see way down in there. We are gonna get a sample. She's a little itchy to make sure we still don't have any type of residual infection going on. But let's go this way. I know, sweet pea. I'm tired of having ears messed with, huh? So we can see all the way down in there, no lesions or anything, but we still have some debris, like I said, so we're gonna take a sample of that. We'll look under the microscope and see if we have anything growing. Um, it's always important when you're talking about ear infections or concerned that you have ear infections to get a sample. Just randomly dosing ear medications is not a good idea because we could have yeast, we could have bacteria, a combination of the two. So we always wanna make sure that we're dosing appropriate medicine if needed. But yeah, so I'm much happier here with how this looks, so we'll see what we've got going on and get the appropriate stuff. So just follow up for Miss Dora. Uh, she did have a yeast infection in both ears. We looked underneath the microscope and it's very important that we look under the scope to determine if there's bacteria, yeast, or combination of the two. And then that way we can pick the appropriate medication and treatment. So she is going to have um, 
some cleaner and medications that her owner is going to apply at home. Uh, and we will monitor her here in the future. If we have some recurrent ear infections, then we are going to have to talk about what the underlying trigger for that is. And it very well may be either a food or environmental allergy. But for now, we've got the polyps resolved. We're resolving the ear infections and she should do well long term.